Caminas and welcome to our 10th episode of Coffee with a Side of Healing. I think this is the first time I say the name of the podcast correctly. Um, so I'm very excited again that this is our 10th episode and we are actually on location at a wonderful place called, uh, what is it called, Brigida? Milk and Cookies in the city of Southgate. And so we're very grateful to actually to Milk and Cookies for having us here. Not only are they a local fixture in Service Area 7, but are very supportive of mental health services in the community and just a, a great business to come and support. So if you are all ever in the area, please come over to Milk and Cookies and we'll definitely drop the address later on on the video so that you guys can all find the location. But um, we want to move forward because Although we don't have a very heavy show for everyone, we do want to kind of uh, move it along and do our traditional, um, what do we call this, este, popcorn. So um, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and send it off to Vanessa. And uh, Vanessa can then uh, go ahead popcorn off to the rest of the team or however you all ladies feel fit. Hi, my name is Vanessa Cusas. I am a community health worker here in Spa 7 with the PRC. So we're excited to be here and to celebrate the 10th episode. Yay. I'll go ahead and popcorn it to Erica. Thank you, Vanessa. And it's very uh, emotional day. We turned 10, right? 10 episodes. Please binge watch it. You could go to one through nine. You want to catch up? No, I'm just kidding. It's really an honor to be here. Um, I'm one of the coaches for the Great Salt 7. Um, and it's an honor to be here. My name is Erica Corral, and stay tuned. Don't press pause, but press play. See you in a bit. I'm going to now uh, popcorn to uh, Miss Bridget. Thanks, Erica. Ya huele a cafecito, no? So I think it's about that time. Um, we just need the side of healing. Um, Brigida Bridget Salina, Service Area 7 Administration. I am the School Based Mental Health Coordinator. Um, I'm also the health neighborhood liaison, and the last hat that I wear would be the faith-based uh, liaison as well. I'm happy to be here, excited for the coffee and the convo, and I'm going to popcorn it off to a Supervisor Jaime. Thank you so much. I, I feel like we missed somebody, but again, uh, my name is Jaime Gomez. I uh, was formerly with Service Area 7 Administration, but now as Brigida mentioned, I am the new uh, community health worker supervisor at the Service Area 7 PRC, which I'm very grateful to be a part of that awesome team. So I'm going to go ahead and popcorn it off to Matilde. Go, Matilde. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Matilde Gonzalez. I'm a community health worker over at the PR Resource Center in Service Area 7. And I'm so excited to be here today celebrating the 10th episode um, for many more to go. Um, and I'll actually popcorn it over to Evelyn. Hi, I'm excited to be here. Um, this is my second episode coming, but we are on the 10th episode. My name is Evelyn Salas. I'm a community health worker right here with the PRC Service Area 7 also. Yay! So then we'll go back to Jaime. We got some actually really nice uh, coffees from uh, Milk and Cookies, which is amazing. Um, so we're very grateful to be here again. Um, but definitely what we wanted to do today is just kind of have a, a recap show and really talk about uh, how we got here uh, to the 10th episode and how we got started. Um, unfortunately, I, I wish I wish I wish our chief was here today because I know that he has some very valuable input that lends to that whole conversation. Um, but with that said, um, I'm going to try to um, uh, reminisce with Erica a little bit because I know me and Erica kind of did this together or started way back with the rest of the group. And so uh, from what I remember, the way we started with the podcast was literally through the peer leadership team group. Uh, the peer leadership team group was developed by the SALT from community members who basically wanted to have a little bit more input and wanted to be able to kind of develop a group where they were able to have a forum where they could communicate directly with administration and our chief and maybe basically be able to provide input on the development of our PRC and things of that nature. And I remember that in one of those meetings, uh, you know, we were kind of all struggling to figure out how we were going to 
better provide uh, resources to the community. And uh, one of the ideas that was mentioned was about uh, developing a uh, podcast. And I remember that initially, instant, in, instantly, I was a little uh, concerned because I was uh, not sure if that would be something that we could do. Um, you know, I, you know, I, I didn't know if it would be something that we could pull off. Um, but Erika, I'm not sure if you want to chime in and, and share a little bit more of your perspective. Definitely, Jaime. I think, um, like I had said earlier, it's a little bit emotional because at one point, um, this was just like a, a thought or an idea that it came out of a peer. Um, I think um, even though our chief Manuel Rosas is not here, like, like, como se dice, se ve, se siente que él está presente because uh, without him and his leadership, we, you know, none of us would be here. But I also get to see that uh, without the leadership and then the peers, we wouldn't be able to move to where we're at now. And it's a 10th episode on a located area in Spa 7 uh, where it supports mental health. And I think it's very important, like you mentioned, Jaime, uh, it came out of an idea of a peer. Um, we were able to help and nurture for that to happen and not to think like, oh, let's have a podcast. Well, a ver, right? It's not a ver. It's more like, how can we go about it and then very much nurture like the steps that need to be taken, um, what resources we have that can help us to maybe get to the first, first episode. And, you know, by the hand of um, Jaime, it got to the first episode, it got to the second episode. And now we are here to the 10th. Um, I mean, I joke around, but we, you know, we're like very much 90 episodes away from 100. So, I mean, it's just moving away and very thankful that, you know, we've been able to like go back to our admin, go back to our chief, you know, with the idea of a peer. And we want to continue to have that, you know, repetition that it is for Spot 7. Like when we have concerns, when we have problems within Spot 7, we fix it among our house. Uh, when we have innovative ideas, we nurture it and you make it grow, right? It was a semiguita that started and Jaime was like, well, let me see what I could do. And his creativity, like, look at him. His baby now is 10 years old. I mean, not 10 years old, sorry, 10 episodes. But definitely, um, it's, as I sit back and think of episode one through nine and, and uh, how much information we have been able to put out there, how much awareness and how much maybe some people might have thought some stereotypicals about um, mental health, it has changed. So very thankful that, you know, now is 10 episodes and vamos por más. And you guys can click on, if it's difficult to talk about a topic, you could always look at it, click on it, sit down with someone and it could spark that conversation. If you need to stop it, it's a podcast, you stop it. And then you have that dialogue because that's what it's all about, right? We're here together to support each other and you know, definitely, Hyman, like, thank you for taking that step, you know, forward and bringing everyone here. You know, it started with that thought, but like, look how much it has grown. Um, and we're going to continue to grow for the best of the community and the best for the department. So, yeah, I'll throw it back to Mr. Hyman because I'm going to drink know, liquor. Drinking this you know, coffee. You know, as we're enjoying our coffee, you know, Erika, you, you talk about, you know, it feels like 10 years because of all the growth that we've had on this podcast. It does feel like 10 years, 10 years, 10 episodes, the big 10 of growth. Um, you know, one of the, the bits and pieces of feedback that we've received is that, you know, they love how the podcast helps connect right with this content. Um, you know, we are privileged to do what we love to do, right? Bring mental health to the forefront and to be able to do this innovatively, you know, we're able to highlight it, to look at the intersectionality of mental health with the community's needs. You know, it gives us permission to lean into it, right? This new innovative idea that came about, you know, we kind of all knew that the voice was important. We all knew peer representation. We knew all of these key factors were there, but it's how are we going to give ourselves permission to feel it and lean into some of these topics that aren't easy to talk about. But guess what? We're here, the Big Ten, you know, whether it's, hey, we hear about youth or some of the school-based mental health needs or some of the priorities, we're able to bring them to the forefront to the forefront, right? So um, don't forget to hit rewind to look at our big growth. But yeah, I don't know, Jaime, what do you think about, you know, the impact that this collective is making? You know, I, I think uh, honestly, it's it's a, 
exceeded my expectations. I, I hate to say that, but it's one of my like go to terms. Uh, initially, I'll be honest, I didn't even think we get past our pilot episode. I had this huge like fear that I was going to be told, you know what? No, this isn't going to happen, sir. Uh, calm yourself down. It's over. And look at us now. We're on episode number 10. And I think for um, not just for us for service area seven, but in terms of what it says for the county, for the community, you know, really utilizing this platform to provide and communicate the resources to our community and then bringing in the right people. I think one of the things that was very important to me was to make sure that this podcast was uh, for the community, by the community, and definitely bringing in the PRC team, as well as um, Brigida, who's amazing in Service Area 7 Admin, or Erika, who is like our co-chair for the song. And, uh, you know, once you go back, or if you've already seen the episode, uh, really looking at the fact that we played with different members. We had different individuals who were regulars. We switched back and forth until we found this really awesome team. You know, um, for example, Matilde. Matilde has been with the PRC since the inception of the PRC. She's awesome. She she brings such a really good skill. She's she's super shy, but she brings a really good skill and she's a, re a great team member and I think if I'm not mistaken, uh, Vanessa came after. Vanessa's also amazing. She's also with the PRC. And then uh, last but not least, Evelyn's the baby. She's shy, but she's awesome too. Every And, and I guess what I'm trying to get to is uh, the impact is all about the teamwork that we've all put together and come together to share our collective resources together. Uh, Brigida herself is a resource. She's the liaison to everything. And uh, again, La Señorita Erika, but more importantly, I think uh, just going back to where we are now, uh, this 10th episode, I think, means a lot to everybody. And uh, as you go back and rewind and look at the other episodes, you're going to see how we all grew. Uh, the nervousness changed. Um, we all started brushing our hair for the podcast, uh, doing hair and makeup. Uh, we don't have our ring lights today, but typically we do. And then just really being able to have these conversations um, to highlight some of these great resources we have. And I think too, um, I can't forget that one of the most important things for me was uh, delivering these resources to the community in a way that they would understand. Uh, not talking down or talking at them, but actually having a conversation. Uh, so often do we all as professionals attend endless meetings. Uh, endless meetings where it's very heavy on data and just sometimes it, it's it's too much. There's such thing as an information overload. So I would say that one of the ideas was for this podcast to bring those resources to the community in a way that we could all understand. Um, but I'm not sure if, um, if Vanessa or uh, Evelyn want to chime in on some of the specific ways that their uh, contributions have led to the podcast. I know uh, Vanessa has a huge space in her heart for youth and for clergy. And I think not to say that's her special quality, but definitely it's something that she could kind of chime in on. But I definitely uh, thank you, Jaime. I, I, when you guys were talking about how the, the podcast was birthed, it just like really dawned on me like, what I really, really love about Spall 7 is that we really tailor to the community. And that's been our model, right, for the PRC. I think, um, you know, being able to participate in Evelyn's groups and Matilda's groups, it's like we always ask for the input. Like, what do you want to learn about? What what can we build on? What support do you want? Not what we want, but what you want to see out of this, because this is also your group. You know, we're in it collectively. And I never really knew that the podcast was built off of a pure so I think that's so awesome because it just goes again based on like what what our, our our foundation is that we're here to serve our community and the fact that this podcast was built off of uh, the community's request is so amazing but it just goes back to that we really care about our community like we we care so much that we tailor and we support specifically to them and I think that's what makes us really special in spa seven that we're really here to support not only where we listen but we will hear and we will implement what what's being asked of us and i see it day in and day out you know that's exactly how all of our groups were were introduced to the prc we had um, a community event uh, which was amazing it was so many people very unexpected 
Um, it was an amazing turnout. And just by that, just collecting all their ideas, you know, that's how we came up with, you know, all of our groups. We have our co-occurring disorder group. We have our um, parenting group, our peer group, our mindfulness group. And we're just continuing to build and really support the community. And I think that as a PRC that we all have different um, lived experiences, but it's like, the way I see it, right, it's like we all have individual powers. And when you bring those powers together, it's just like a superhero. It's like emerging, you know, because we're able to really collaborate. And that's another thing I've definitely seen with SPA 7 that I'm so excited to be a part of is that we're so big on supporting each other, growing together, uplifting each other, and really bringing that service to the community. And coming together and working on each other's strengths just really tailors and provides that support to our community that they really seek. So it's been an amazing journey. I'm super excited to be here. Um, it's just, I really enjoy what I do, honestly, working with participants in our community and our peers. It's just amazing. And just like Jaime said, right, we're not here to, to talk down on them or just to really relate to someone to have a conversation it's amazing how much growth like not only that we're able to support to the community but also being part of the groups or leading groups has also been an input for me and growth for me so it's amazing just to kind of show how one another just as human beings we can come together and just support each other as a whole so it's been amazing and i really would want the girls to share on their experience it's been awesome so thank you for having me here i don't know if anybody wants to share you. Yes, definitely. So thank you for sharing, um, Vanessa. You're right. Um, it has been a really good experience um, coming into the PRC, um, coming in from a different sector. I came in from the child sector completely. Um, and it's, it, it dawns on me that there's so many areas that we're able to provide for the PRC now that it's not just the children that I'm we're here for. I'm here with the children, the parents, the adults, the older adults, like anybody that's in need within our community, um, being able to provide those support to them is is awesome. like totally awesome to me. Um, also, this podcast thing, um, I was telling him, I didn't know we were being recorded, actual video recording. I really found out. So now I know why everybody was all dolled up and everything, but fine like now I was like okay well I need to be a little bit better um but you know what it, it's really awesome seeing all of this and knowing that it's on the site that it's accessible to everybody and anybody um even including even worldwide it's actually accessible because it, it is on our site and it is a podcast that everybody could have access to I think it's just awesome to have this um but yeah, thank you guys for having me here. And, you know, I'm really excited to continue doing this. And it's our 10th episode, so I'm really excited. Absolutely, Matilde. Um, so I'm going to share a quick story. I don't think I've shared this with Jaime um, ever. Um, so this is going to be really fun. Uh, so when I first, the first conversation I had with Jaime, he mentioned all of these different things about DMH. I had very little idea of what they were. I come from the private sector, from real estate, so being in mental health was kind of a new um, tonic for me, um, but I was willing to learn. I had, you know, a willing heart and an open mind, and I remember speaking with Jaime, and he mentioned the coffee with the side of healing. So after we hung up, I remember I put on the the podcast. I started from the from the first one. And I couldn't stop. You know, I was taking notes. I was like, oh, he mentioned this. They mentioned that. So I just kept writing things down. And then when I had time, I went back and I Googled all of these different things that um, that were being mentioned. And that was my real first introduction. And I remember after I got to the last one, I remember thinking, when are they going to release the next one? And I thought, should I should I ask Jaime? I don't want to come off as like, you know, pressuring him or anything, even though we just met. Um, but I couldn't wait for the next episode. Um, so as an outsider kind of coming into mental health and learning about all these different aspects of mental health, I found this podcast to be amazing and very relatable. And thank you again for having us. I, we're so excited to be on the 10th and then soon on the 100th episode, uh, like Erica mentioned.
10 going on 100, right? We're celebrating the special anniversary episode, our 10th episode. And so we're definitely 10 going on 100. Very exciting. So Matila put it out there in the universe. So uh, mental health uh, podcast coming at you, Service Area 7. Um, so exciting. So uh, thanks for sharing the story. Absolutely. You know what, Matila, it's so funny you say that because... Uh, I hope that our community members who are listening realize that that's the intention. Um, at no point was this intended to revolve around me. As a matter of fact, I'm trying to take more and more of a step back and kind of let um, us all take the lead, you know, um, more about empowerment. And, you know, as part of the team now, you guys realize that I'm not just talk, that that's really the way I work, um, but really just about empowerment and sharing the resources with everybody. I'm going to steal this from my buddy. I'm not a resource auger. Um, I'm definitely open to just sharing the well. And I realized that in service area, service area seven, we have so many great providers, programs, um, groups, you name it, that, you know, unfortunately our community is just not aware of. So again, just kind of going back to one of the reasons was to be able to, uh, share these resources with the community in a way that they could access during times of the pandemic when we weren't able to be in person, right? Typically, the routine would be for one of us, right? So um, without getting into too much lingo, uh, we would have outreach and engagement events, which would typically be a resource fair where you would show up and you would see one of our smiling faces with a lot of resources and, and, and uh, pamphlets um, on information and programs that were out in the community. Unfortunately, when the when the pandemic hit, that was impacted in a way that it was unsafe for us to be out in the community. So again, that's where my wheel really started spinning and kind of being like, how can we leverage this podcast to really be able to share these resources with our community? And I started meeting great people like Matilde, La Señorita Erika. Erika was, was essential in this because, uh, you know, whenever I felt like this isn't going to happen. She would say, no, I mean, it is. We're going to do it. And, and just her energy and her her um, encouragement of me and help this all come to fruition and get us to to share some of these great resources. Um, you know, I'm sure when you all have time, you'll check on our website and look at the different episodes that we have on there. But literally 10 episodes or nine episodes, it's a great deal of resources and information. We've spotlighted such great uh, uh, groups or programs such as our promotores. Uh, we've spotlighted our peer-led groups. Uh, we've spotlighted uh, suicide prevention, suicide awareness. Um, our peer-run groups, again, from Service Area 7, school-based mental health, maternal mental health, to name some of the few, VPAN, which is an amazing program. And even for me, that that... You know, I've been in the mental health field for a lifetime already. I wouldn't, I, I, I can't lie about that. I've learned so much from this great group of people who have brought all these resources and, you know, made all these different types of connections. Again, not for me, but for the community. Um, but Erika, maybe you can like, reminisce with me a little bit on, like, so the way I brought Erika into this entire mix was that I had to convince her to become one of our co-chairs. And I used to be with that administration and, and that was tough, you know, for someone, for those of you who don't know what we're referring to, we have a monthly meeting called the Service Area Leadership Team 7 meeting, which is SALT. It used to be called the SAC. And the meeting for the SALT or the purpose for the SALT meeting is for community members and providers to come together and basically come to a common understanding on services and potential needs and changes that might happen. So it's a very heavy meeting. And La Senorita Erika was a participant on behalf of her provider. And I started using my charm and my DJ voice to try to convince her to join the song. But I think more importantly, um, she's been very instrumental in the podcast because without her uh, being our co-chair and my friend, I think it wouldn't have pushed me forward to, to really have this come to fruition. But Senorita Erika? You know, I, I definitely approached him, I approached Manny, I, I approached our previous coach too, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ricardo, and then Alicia, and then 
it's been a path, right? But I think something that I could speak on, on behalf of me, because I went through the process, is like, you really can reach out to anyone here in, in Spot 7 and you will get support um, from like, what about if we do the meeting this way or we have a podcast in this way? And I could definitely, you know, applaud you, Jaime, because there was a lot of good, there's a lot of good podcasts out there from 1 through 9 and now including this one, 10, where um, you could definitely start a conversation and, and look at mental health as a whole from like, having to d discuss something so difficult like, you know, suicide prevention or maybe how to support a veteran, how to support a youth. Um, I think um, with knowledge, it comes a lot of responsibility. And I think all of us have a lot of knowledge and we take that responsibility very serious. And that's why when someone brings it to our attention, like, what about this? What about that? The minimum information that we get, we we don't like take it away. We try to like nurture it and being able to take it all the way as much as people might think of it. Um, I'm very thankful that now we have three, um, two other coaches too at the uh, salt. Something that it's it's not been seen, but like we do, we started also the peer center and the peer committee. So very much driven by it. And I think we wanna be able to continue to do more episodes of, of the podcast with topics that the community wants. Um, uh, Jaime brought up that this podcast is done by the community for the community. And can, honestly, we can say today in the community, we're here. We're no longer in an office. We're not on a cubicle. We're literally in the community. If I could like move my computer, you guys will see that we're here. The street is like right there. I can literally go outside and like I go say hi to people because that's the way we are. We want to be able to bring the resource to you, not to tell you this is the way the coffee tastes or the panecito tastes. We're showing you how we have it. I think it's so symbolic how we just got the coffee and we started because that's what it is, right? A lot of the conversations that we look at culture or any way, you always start having a difficult conversation. Like if you need to talk to someone like a friend or your family member, like let's go have coffee because I need to talk to someone, right? And there's a saying in Spanish, la, las penas con pan son menos, right? So if you have a little panecito, it kind of feels a little bit different as you're talking about it. Um, and if anyone can like recap when you have had a difficult time, they need to talk. You've probably had a little cup of coffee with someone because you needed to vent. So there's nothing wrong with it. It's just being able to take care of all of us. I think something the pandemic has really taught us is that we need to help out each other. Um, and I, I say a lot of things, and this is something that I also click with Jaime too, that um, I use a lot of metaphors. So it's kind of like saying, una, una flor no hace verano, right? Like one flower is not going to make spring. So I think for us coming together, we've been able to support each other and go through this process. And I'm so glad that we've been able to be innovative, but we're also listening to the community. Like Jaime once said, you know, we have two ears and one mouth. So we are listening twice as much to the community as we speak one time, because we definitely want, you know, all of you guys to feel heard. Spot 7 is very diverse um, in each section. So we want to be able to go to every reconcito. So please press play as many times as you can. If you think of any ideas, please send it in. We're more than open to do it. Um, I think everyone in this podcast, I could speak for them. I think they're very like, you know, flexible, we could do anything. Like if you want us to do or go anywhere, I think this bunch is very, very flexible. I could also maybe speak also for the chief, Mr. Manny. I'm pretty sure he'll be open to it, but I will park that one. But uh, yeah, definitely Jaime, it's just been an amazing journey that we don't want to get off. We want to continue to get more. And just like, you know, Ms. Bridget said, we have 90 more to go for a hundred. Absolutely. And yeah, definitely. You know, real quick, um, just something that I thought of, Eddie, guys, um, just to show you all what I'm talking about. Whenever I would approach Erika with any type of negativity, like being on location was her idea. Okay, this was not my idea. She was like, I'm in, I know this place. I know this place. I know this spot. I know this. And I was like, wait, not yet. Wait, not yet. Hold on. Wait. You know, because there, there was a lot of nervousness for myself. And and just anxiety about how to do this appropriately, safely, and, and in the best way possible. So she's actually been my motivator behind that. But I, I, 
I can't go without saying or expressing again my appreciation to my partner in crime, Brigida, right here, because we wouldn't be here at this location without Brigida. She knows this individual and she is a wealth of resource, but but I'll let uh, Brigida talk about how that all came to fruition as well. You know, I'm gonna uh, take a little, usually I'm the one who's like helping tie all the loose ends, but I'm gonna take a quick left just because there's been a wealth of content right now. And, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a quick left, quick right. Um, Hi, man, Erika, and even, you know, the rest of the peers who are on here. One of the questions that I've had that I've been sitting with for a while, just recapping all of our content for nine podcasts by nine episodes is, What's your favorite moment? Like, I want to highlight, what's your favorite moment? So, Jaime, I'm going to ask you first, since you have so many awesome stories. Um, that's, you know, that, that I'm probably the wrong person to ask. So, so just so that everybody knows, I do all the editing. So, um, what that means is uh, I sit, watch the podcast, and make sure that we're all on our P's and Q's and uh, make all the magic happen in the background. Um, but I'll be honest with you. So I'm a father. Uh, my daughter's going to be three years old. And I think probably one of the most, the favorite podcast I had was the maternal mental health one. I think it really hit home. Um, I think it was um, an amazing presentation by uh, two of the staff, um, Danica and Veronica, Vanessa, I can't remember the other individual's name. She's going to not like me for that. Sorry. But um, I think that really hit home for me because, uh, you know, it's just real. It's uh, even uh, what I realized is even fathers go through some of the maternal mental health symptoms. And I think just expressing that as uh, not that I represent all men in the world, but just expressing that at a, as a man and expressing that as a father goes a long way, realizing that, you know, that a lot of these things happen and a lot of people don't talk about them. It's not that it's new science. It's just just really unheard. And again, it, for me, it really speaks to why we were doing the podcast to share some of this information that's already out there for all of us as professionals, but at the same time, bring it to the community. So so be he that you pick somebody else now. <laughs> all right. So maternal mental health, that was a big one. Erika, what about you? I know you're on the other side out there yonder, but I'm over here, cerquita de la ventana, right? No, but um, I think I like all of them because I think it went to a point that we started with episode one. It took a lot. We did a lot of takes, you know, a lot of hair and makeup. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I think all of them were great. I just think for me, like the uh, like maternal mental health, it was a lot of knowledge. I think um, the home team was also very, very, you know, a lot of information. I love that we had the peers um, show us their group. Like, you know, we had um, the uh, one drum who like showed us how they, they, they do that. And then we had the, the apoyo group, right? That they have uh, as well. So I, I would hate that I have to pick one, um, Bridget. And I want to continue to have more. I want to continue more and more. Like, you cannot only have one. So I want to like see if, how, much, how much more we could get on those 90s. And I'm looking forward to see if people can send us more, like, what episodes would you like to have? Because I think, Bridget, I think it would do more justice if we have, out of 100 episodes, Erica, which one did you pick? So I could probably answer that when we get to 100, too. You know, why not? Send us, send us information. So post it here, wherever you want, as to what episodes you guys want to have. If you want to have any of us do, like, stuff in the community and visit stuff in Spot 7, like I said, this group is very flexible. If you guys wanted to go to a esquinita or go somewhere in Spa Sever, we're more than open to it. But I don't think I have a favorite one, Jaime or, or Bridget or family. But okay. I, I would, I want to have more episodes. So send us feedback. Okay, so everyone, you heard it here on this podcast right now is that Erika said that she's going to give us our, you know what, we'll be nice. We'll give you top three moments. Once we get to our 100th podcast episode, we're going to circle back. Erika, we're going to hold you accountable and we're going to want to hear those top three. All right, so I'm going to go on to the rest of our peers here, the rest of our team, our co-facilitators, co-hosts. So Evelyn, what is your favorite podcast, podcast moment, moment experience? Uh-oh. 
That's a good one. I think my favorite one was the last one, which I was on, and it was because it was a awe moment for me yesterday. I was reviewing some of the podcasts and going through them with my husband and stuff. So he was asking me, like, what podcast um, were you on? And I was like, oh, I was in the last one. It was really good. So then he's the one that discovered that it was, it was recorded, um, like video recorded. So it was an awe moment for me, like, wait, what? It was re- like the video. I thought it was only audio. But um, I think it was just really good um, overall. I mean, it was something new for me. This overall is something new for me, um, being in a podcast and stuff. But I do like it. I like the fact that we're able to get all this information out to the community. And um, like Brigida and Erica and Heimer were saying, you know, this is all community based. And what is it that they need? What is it that they're informing us of? You know, what does the community need? And how are we bringing it out to them? Therefore, you know, like they said, send us what is it that you guys want to hear? What is it that you guys want to know about? And we will definitely be out there and doing these podcasts for you guys so that you guys are able to have this information. Because I think it's really important for all of us to have this information. Um, Like I said earlier, I used to be in the nonprofit sector. And a lot of times we didn't have this information. And it was really hard trying to figure out like, hey, who, does anybody know any like suicide prevention or any like promotoras or stuff like that? It was really difficult to get out there and get that information. But I think, you know, having the podcast and, you know, just having all like the sites going and everything is really helpful to all of us that that information gets out there to the community. And they have this information for them to access. It's an easy access and it's actually worldwide, which is, I think it's the best because I remember Prior to me transferring to DMH completely, um, I had a family that, um, unfortunately, you know, the parent was deported and stuff, but she would reach out to me like, Evelyn, like, I still need your support or I still need to just like, at least like a, hey, um, because we miss our coffees. I used to, actually in this area was where I would meet with her. So we would go out for coffee in the morning, you know, like, hey, let's go get her coffee, you know, and chat and stuff. And I think that's something important to keep in mind that a lot of our families need that. Um, and I think just being able to provide that to them with the episodes and then being able to just hear the information that's out there for them, I think it's really important. So, um, but I don't have a specific, the b- best one, I really don't right now. I might circle back like Erica said, um, maybe on the hundreds, maybe I'll have a little bit more like, okay, you know what, I like this one. But right now I think, I think all of them were really good. Um, but yeah, my awe moment was the last one. Yeah, okay, we're gonna hold you to it, Evelyn. You know, I think uh, going to the community at large, meeting them where they're at, in the community, right? You know how they say live on set? We're like, hey, we're live in the community and in the city of Southgate in our own service area. You know, we're big about being from the community in the community. Um, But circling back to everything, I know that one of our faces that transitioned in was right around the time that my face transitioned in on the podcast. So I want to know what your top favorite time was, Vanessa. It's so unfair to pick one, but I I can share a little bit about a few of them, um, why I felt like they were important. But to say one was my favorite, it's unfair. I, I think that every podcast had its purpose and I think every podcast touched somebody. And if that's, that's what we're here for. If, if our words can touch somebody, we did our job, you know? Um, but for me, I think, of course, the peer ones dear to my heart. Cause Hey, I'm a peer. Hey, small seven peer PRC, um, the school based one. Cause you know, that's where my heart is at and our youth. And it's something that's definitely needed and schools need more support in mental health and, Unfortunately, the need is greater than what, you know, the whole society can can provide at this point. But I think just being peers, we can also provide that support and fill in those gaps. So I think that's why, you know, PRC is so important in that sense. A maternal mental health, like, just touched me because that was something that I went through. I was a really young mom. You know, I got, I, I moved kind of fast. I got pregnant at 21 and I had my son and you know, no one really sat there and, and talked about, you know, going through depression and postpartum depression and, you know, having a child at 21, having this baby come to this world and the nurse asking, like, do you want to carry him? And I was like, it was like, I, I, 
I didn't connect. Like it was the weirdest thing, right? Because I carried this child for nine months and I couldn't connect. And as time went by, I was able to, but just to kind of um, let other mothers know, like this happens, you know, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. It doesn't mean that you don't love your child. It's something that happens and let's talk about it. Let's learn, let's grow. So I think that one was really, really important for me. And I think it's something that we definitely need to touch more on. So kudos to everybody that was on that podcast. I know Matilda is really big about promoting that, that mental, um, maternal mental health. We've had those conversations too about our experiences and going through that. Um, of course, VPAN, I was on that too. You know, our veterans deserve better. And, and as a community, I think that we're, we're growing and we're learning on how to support them you know they they do a lot for us they they give up their lives you know their family is important to me you know and being a wife I don't know how I can handle my spouse being deported for a year two years at a time you know that's something that's a big sacrifice and to you know for them to come back and have having to struggle with mental health and making sure that they have that support is is important you know they deserve that support and we all do but you know, they really did sacrifice and, and it, it just, it, I'm happy to know that VPAN is around, that there is something there to support our, our veterans. And CAB, CAB is so important, right? Empowering our community, empowering our, our peers, empowering to hear voices. And just like you said, Vigera, it's so important, like we are meeting our community where they're at. It's not about us trying to change them, to have them meet us, but if now we're learning that, no, we need to meet them where they're at and we need to support them just like Evelyn said if you have to go out to the community and have that cafecito that's what you got to do and that's what we're here for right we're here to serve our community you know and it's it's just I I totally you know I have to say Matilde was actually the first one who actually uh kind of uh explained coffee with the sun healing to me I was there when she was like digging so I can testify yeah she was she was all up in that and um she I was like what are you doing she's like oh it's online and you should listen to it it's really good and that's how I started listening to it because she was listening to it and that word of mouth it it's it, it gets around and it really does uh get that that information out there so um I think this is a great way to to really reach our community where they're at and I'm really happy for everyone here Brigida, Erica, Jaime, even the PRC team for what we do it's it's you know it takes a village and I think we we're definitely the village and I just really and I gotta say I was so surprised that we had um a clergy roundtable I loved attending it I love being part of it fortunately it's the same time I run group now but just really out there for the community to know like you know it's it's about collaboration right it's about putting our differences aside and really serving. And that's what the church does. We're here to serve. We're here to serve. You know, my parents are pastors. I'm a clergy. I'm actually a chaplain too. So, you know, it's it's about really serving the community and supporting them where they're at. And so thank you guys for just, you know, really putting your hearts out there and putting the good work because it's positive. And I can say we really care. and We really want to meet our community where they're at. So it's been a great experience. So I'm not going to sit here and be biased and pick one. I really like them all. Honestly, they all serve their purpose. And I think that's the point. Vanessa said, "Minimo tres o cuatro. She's like, she's like, I'm going to give you for these 10 episodes, I'm going to give you top three, four, maybe inch my way into five. So then Matilde, would this make you like the OG of the OGs since you're going to give your recap now? What your top moment podcast? Um, yeah. Would and it, I actually, how that goes? Um, I'm going to, I'm going to break away from the group a little bit here and I'm actually going to pick one in particular. And it's going to be um, episode nine, the client advisory board. Um, and I think that one is really near and dear to me um, because that's the first podcast that the three of us were together, um, the PRC. And we also had our trusty, uh, fearless leader, Jaime. Um, so I think that kind of just brought the PRC um, to me and I hope it brought it to the community as well. Um, but it also highlighted the work that um, Veronica Torok does, a staff member at Rio Hondo, and really highlighted all everything that she does for our clients and everything that the clients themselves do for each other. And I thought that that was so um, that was so important because it's what communities do. It takes a village. I think I remember we mentioned it earlier, and it really does take a village, regardless of where you are. We kind of are part of one in one section and we kind of just sprout and we grow together. Um, so that I think that has to be my top, top moment for um, for Coffee with a Side of Healing. Look at that. We've had, you know, our cab. We've had our 
you know, veterans, you know, shout out to them and thank you for their service. Uh, we've talked about school based mental health, fault, the youth, you know, we've had it all in a short period of time, 10 episodes, such a great moment. And, you know, like Erika said, we're on our way to 100. So then she can give us as well as Evelyn what the top three favorite moments will be. We'll hold her to it. Um, but yeah, such such great times, right? Even for me, I can share a little bit with my experiences. So I came in a little bit later in the game and I just kind of, you know, it was this nice rhythm that we had where we were able to talk about things that are important from the community because our heart was there. And so it's always been so cool to be like, welcome back. And it's like, hey, welcome back because we are in the mix. Why? Because our hearts in it, you know, we care about mental health, the community that we're in cares about mental health and so many heavy hitting topics that I don't know, Jaime, what do you what do you see happening? What do you see in the future as we work towards 100 episodes? Thank you, Rita. You know, it's so funny. Um, I'm laughing because I was thinking um, about what I wanted to say next, but it's such a great transition. So I think uh, very importantly for me, kind of going back to the beginning and for what's in the future is, uh, this was never about me um, putting my face on camera. I'm usually the guy in the background. I want to shoot film. I want to edit. And that's it. Um, this was more about bringing resources to the community by the community. And what a beautiful or better way to transition to having the PRC staff take more of the lead in the podcast. And I think that's one thing that's instrumental for me. You know, they are all community members um, at one point or in, in, in one light or another. And I think that uh, that uh, moving forward, I think in the future, you're going to see a lot more of them uh, taking the lead, um, either co-facilitating, bringing up special topics, connecting, maybe talking about their groups, talking about the activities that are happening at the PRC, um, which I think is going to be a beautiful thing because the reality is that so uh, PRC stands for Peer Resource Center. And our peer resource center is in the city of Huntington Park, correct? And I'll put up that address soon too as well. Uh, but the idea is that uh, that uh, they're at the peer resource center. We're open to receiving community members, uh, staff, anyone who wants to come and join one of our groups. And the idea is basically to have a place where people can come and not necessarily be involved in therapy traditionally, but still get some support through support groups. And so we have all these variety of support groups and who better to talk about that than our staff there um, who are well-rounded and co-facilitate or facilitate these wonderful groups. And uh, that was kind of honestly, um, it took a while, I guess you would say 10 episodes, right? To really ramp it up and get it there. I know we had to wait for everyone to be officially on board and then kind of get them comfortable with the idea of being on a podcast. Cause I know that even for me, I'm like, again, I wanna, I wanna hide. <laughs> I wanna do what my daughter does and cover my eyes. But I think uh, now that they're here, uh, really kind of letting them take that role. That's why you've seen me kind of just sit more in the background quietly. But with that said, I think it's very important for me to realize that none of this would be possible without the support of Service Area 7 administration. And I think that's why Brigida's here, because I think, uh, you know, of course, she's not the administration office, but part of the administration office and plays a very crucial role. And then Erika, we need our salt here. So I think it's collaboration. So this would go, this wouldn't go anywhere without the proper collaboration. And um, again, just going forward into what I see in the future, definitely more episodes, more on location episodes, promoting more of our local businesses like this wonderful place that we are on here today at Milk and Cookies. They gave us amazing Milk and Cookies latte. Um, I think this one is called the, what was it called? Orchata. Orchata latte. It's delicious. But my point is that we want to do more of this. Uh, we want to support more of the local businesses in service area seven that are actually in support of mental health services, that are actually in support of the community and are trying to do things in a grassroots And I think for me, that's very big. I think, again, like I said, uh, handing over the podcast more to the ladies, letting them take the lead. I think that's a beautiful thing. And continuing to collaborate with uh, administration, Archie, um, with our SALT, 
And very importantly, with any directly operated clinic or contracted provider that might be interested in joining us. I think um, I'm very inclusive. So for me, a big thing in the future is just allowing this podcast to grow and take the direction that it should naturally be going in. But to answer the question, there's a lot of there's a lot of fun things. I think that uh, maybe next stop we could do it like at a burger joint. I'm just teasing. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. Erica and I are true and true with our cafecito with something to go with it. Absolutely. I know that Erica has offered up some horses and lots of caballitos, Erica. Stay tuned, everyone, because we do want to continue to explore all the corners of Spa 7. Be open to, like, you know, being there in the community. I think uh, the biggest thing that we want to get to, definitely, we do know the peers and everyone in the community has a voice. But I think we want to be able to provide that platform, right? Which is the podcast, which is the peer center. That's a platform. Everyone has that voice. So we just want to be able to bring these two things together and leave it to everyone to know what this is. Like Jaime said, this is not ownership of no one. We're here to do it together. Um, we're kind of like a hand, right? We wouldn't move if the fingers don't move together. So I think at the end of the day, feel free to let us know where you want us to go next or what episode should be next. Because I know that's how the, the podcast will come around for each other one, that everyone was like, what about this one? Can I be on this one? Because it was the need of information at that time. So looking forward to show you what um, DMH can look like through the eyes of a peer, through the eyes of someone in the community, you know? And a lot of the times that's what we call it with the side of healing because it is with the side of healing, right? It's a cafecito that it could just start where you start start feeling a little bit better. Maybe el café at the beginning is un poquito amargo. And then as I start having that conversation and you vent, then you're like, you know what, let's get some cookies, you know? Next thing you know, you're like, you know, haciendo frío, get a tamal. You know, I'm just saying, I think at the end of the day, um, you start with something, and I think um, Jaime was able to give that one foot forward, and we are here at the 10th episode, looking to get at the doors of a quinceañera episode, which is at 15, so stay tuned. And why not at 100 episodes, so you guys can answer, I hear my answers that I'm going to say that I like, but definitely give us the opportunity that we can have you on board to the platform so you could express your voice. So definitely, Jaime, get ready because I think there's a lot more to go and more things to do. I know I had told them that I wanted to do something live, doing things with different everyone out there. So let us know where you want us to go next. And don't forget the ice cream sandwiches, please, porque está caliente. Sí, sí, porque eso no engordan, Bridget. Eso no engordan. Yeah. Well, this has been an amazing 10th episode. I, I'm definitely excited and so happy that we were able to be uh, somewhere in person uh, for those who was who were able to join in person. Um, and definitely, I think it's a good thing. I see a lot of positive things in the future. Um, and and again, I'm, I'm glad this started, como dice Erika, with a little semillita, you know. It was all about just trying to see if we can get past a first episode. And uh, uh, for me, it was uh, trying to pitch this idea to my bosses and hope that they wouldn't slam me over the head with a hammer, right? right. <laughs> but uh, I think with that said, um, it just shows the, the, the type of individuals who are working with Service Area 7 administration all the way on through the clinics and everybody who collaborates, how open it is for us to be able to provide this information to the community and kind of take this new approach. I, I'm not sure if this is still a correct statement, but I want to say at one point we were the first podcast ever for Service Area 7, our LA County Department of Mental Health. Um, I think there might be others in the works um, now, but I think for us definitely, at least for me, it's a huge achievement. Again, uh, going for the first, uh, you know, coming from the first podcast, getting to our 10th episode, now having all these awesome people with me, Vanessa, Evelyn and Matilde, Senorita Erika and Brigida. They're a great team. Uh, I couldn't imagine doing this without them. And uh, definitely, I'm just super excited and I'm super grateful to be able to be here in such a great, wonderful place. You know, I have to share, I typically only do like one cup of coffee a day and that's in the morning. But I don't know, um, shameless plug, right, to milk plus cookies. 
this is really good stuff. This is really good stuff. I could see how really this could good. become a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's you're right. right. I don't know. I usually just do one cup of coffee, like I said, but um, coming in and just seeing it, I was just like, you know what? I need another cup. And then I'm like, and I need cookies and I need cookies to go. So, yes, I think anywhere we go or anywhere that we're getting our cup of coffee or any side of it, I think it's really wow. And it it just goes, it gets us going, gets us talking. I, I think I, I think I enjoy it. Erika, next time we have our next, our 11th episode, are you bringing the Patria coffee and the, and the cookies, the variety pack, a quick dozen? Are you swinging by? Yes, yes. I think we should have conchitas with it, right? You have a cafecito with conchitas. Um, you, you get them small because then, like my dad says, cuatro chiquitas es una grande. It's fine. Um, but no, I think definitely uh, looking forward to see where else we could go that we could take our cafecito and that, that we could take our, our paladar because we're ready to do that. And I think even right now, if you rewind the podcast to when it started, we look very different because we got our cup of coffee, right? She prepared it so nicely for us. Uh, now the ice is melted because it's gotten so good. You know, we kept sipping it. So definitely, Bridget, I think para, para el once, we're having something else. And we're going to be, next, next thing you know, we might be by your side. So, you know, come on by and say hello. Because uh, that's what it is. We are a whole family that we come together. And like you said, Vanessa, it does take a village to support one person. So you're not alone. So stay tuned. And, you know, with that said, um, you know, typical of me, I want to try something different. I do want to do a shameless plug again for um, milk and cookies for having us here. They're amazing people. Um, number two, don't forget to visit our website. You can go to the larger LA County DMH website, simply look for service area seven and you're going to find um, all our podcasts. Did you hear that? That's the beautiful sounds of the streets that we are in. This is so cool. Community rocks. But I think uh, that's live. <laughs> that's live. <laughs> but I think uh, very importantly, I want to give the option to any of the lovely ladies here to close it or end it for today. I think we've spoke a lot, unless I've missed something, and just kind of really want to allow whoever wants to end it. Uh, let's spin the wheel. Or who wants to pick? Or does does is someone gonna pick? Or does someone want to end it with some lovely last words? Uh, don't make me pick. Come on now. Oh, you're all being shy because we've been talking for like an hour and so. <laughs> I think I think Evelyn should close it. I talk a lot, so I'll I'll let other <laughs> other people take the mic. Evelyn, final your your final last words. Oh wow, <laughs> they're not my final ones. They're my to be continued words because we're remember we're shooting to a hundred, so well actually a hundred and beyond. But for now we're shooting for a hundred episodes. But thank you so much for having me here. Also for everybody that will be listening to us. Um, it was awesome. It was a pleasure. And I really do look forward to continuing to provide all this information and the community resources to the community. That way they're able to have everything to their hands and potentially on their phone because, you know, it's all mobile. So. I really look forward to that. But thank you guys and thank you for joining us. And I hope you guys just keep on listening to all of our podcasts that are continuing. And like we said, it's our 10th episode. So yes, thank you guys. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye.